the 1949 Checkers World Championship match was one of the most thrilling and spirited title matches of all time. The current world champion, Walter Hellman, was playing Willie Ryan, who I consider one of the first true American professionals in the game. And what a show they put on for us. Hellman dominated the first half of the match, leading with three wins and 17 draws. Ryan made a historic and unprecedented comeback, nodding the score at four wins apiece and sending the match into overtime. Today, I'm going to focus on game five of the match, one that carries an enormous significance and shows how literally one move can separate you from checker immortality. And it also shows that even the best players can commit a blunder when the stakes are at its highest. So, let's begin. The opening they balloted was 9-13, 23-18, and 12-16. Willie Ryan had the red side, and Walter Hellman had the white side. There is some edge for white in this opening, but even in the 1940s, it wasn't considered very critical. So, Hellman plays the 18-14 attack, driving into red's double corner to try to give it some edge. Red is going to follow up by trying to run off this piece by moving here. Now the natural follow up for white may seem like this move, however, after this exchange, red can then go 16-19 and have the 2 for 2, which actually results in a very even game. So instead, in order to retain some edge for the second side, white can either go here, followed up by 24-19 and then 25-21, or as played in this game, 24-20. Now, white can now continue this runoff. Red is going to follow up here. And now red runs it off in this direction. Now, white can go 29-25, and it's also a draw. However, Hellman plays the 14-10 and the 2-for-2, two two, which later proved successful. And this is also a very good variation to know. So at this point, it's really a cat and mouse type of game. A lot of waiting moves to try to drive towards the opponent's single corner. And now at this point, Willie Ryan is completely expecting 32-28 for Hellman either now or in the following move. However, because Hellman plays this move next, Willie Ryan thinks, okay, maybe he has something prepared, and he does, and these next moves are incredibly critical. This very aggressive move may seem weak at first, but it really develops the full attack. And now here we are, the most critical position of the game, and one that ended up costing Willie Ryan this game. This move here will actually draw. During the game, though, Willie Ryan did see, okay, if white goes here, I can go here. This will draw, but in Willie Ryan's mind, this piece was off the board, so he was seeing ghosts. That's why he didn't commit that move there. Instead, Willie Ryan goes 15-19, and this is the blunder, because now Hellman goes 30-25, the capture, and now red is in a really, really difficult and really a losing position here. So in order to try to salvage as best as he could, Ryan goes here next, Hellman pitches this piece to break the bridge. And now really it's just a masterful ending at this point. Securing the piece here first. Trying to develop for another king.
placing the white king now here in this square. And now nearly all hope is lost, so Willie Ryan pitches the piece here for any last second mistakes, which there are none, and Ryan resigns the game at this point. Let's play that again, but this time from the red perspective. So the opening is 9-13, 23-18, and 12-16. White plays the best attack here, 18-14. And then beginning the runoff. Now again, 25-21 looks natural, but the first side now has 16-19 and the 2 for 2, and it's really no good. So instead, white waits with 24-20 first. Now, the runoff can continue. And instead of 6-10 here, 6-9. And as I mentioned, 29-25 will also draw, but the 14-10 worked out very well in this game. As I mentioned, at this point, it's very much a cat and mouse, developing toward the single corner and hoping for mistakes, as that is what happens here. Now Willie Ryan again was expecting 32-28 at this point, as that's been played frequently in the past. Hellman plays 23-19. Now at this point some of you may be thinking, well, what's wrong with the 15-18 advance here trapping this piece? Well, what happens if Willie Ryan plays this is White has this move here. Now, if red jumps this way, white gets in for an easy king. If red jumps this way, there is a triple jump on the board. And now this piece is trapped. So that's why that 15-18 move cannot take place. So instead, waiting longer, and again, the 15-18 still cannot be played for the same reason as before. And here we go, the critical position on the board. This move will in fact draw, either capture works, but instead the fateful blunder of 15-19 costs Willie Ryan in this game. Pitching the piece back to get easy access to the king row. And now really nothing left else here to do except resign. It's difficult to say how history would have unfolded had Ryan not made this blunder in the game. Well, Hellman did in fact dominate the first half. The second half of the match was all Willie Ryan. With only 10 games to go, Ryan scored three wins to ultimately tie the match after 40 games a deficit that had never previously been overcome in the history of the game. The contract called for an additional 10 games to decide the match, which nearly ended after game 43 with Hellman missing a win. Because of the tie match, Hellman retained his world title and Ryan left as the undefeated world challenger. A rematch was scheduled to take place in 1954 with Ryan eager to capture the elusive crown. But it wasn't meant to be, for Ryan's untimely death came just 10 days before the scheduled match. Instead, Barry and Tinsley got the opportunity to play Hellman the following year in 1955, and we all know how that turned out. 
If you are interested in seeing other classic checkers games and learning more about history, check out this playlist. Thanks, as always, for watching.